Greetings, everyone. My name is Atterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man and Mega City. Continuing on from the last part, I'll now be entering the forge. But before that, I'll be collecting this E tank that I missed earlier. So we have ore processing and a smelting plant. And the bosses are Heat Man and Flame Man. Let's start by going to the right. Item 2, hmm. It's just a dodging segment. I forgot to mention this during the previous episode, but I have no control over my jump height. It's always the same. Welp, I was too far ahead over there. That's why I died. And don't move to the left either. This challenge isn't too bad though. I prefer it over the guts lifts I encountered during the previous episode. And unlike in Mega Man Maker, I don't get telefragged by the Yoko blocks. I only get stuck in between them. These hotheads are certainly different. They are a lot more durable, and the tackle fires they throw bounce around the place. So the hottest throw the tackle fires in series of four. Before I face off against Heatman, I want to first collect this L tank. Lots of fire here. I'm not even sure if most of these attacks are dodgeable.
That wasn't too bad though. We acquired the flame shot. Let's see what it does. Fire Blaster apparently. A great all-purpose combat weapon and we can charge it up by holding the D key. Next teleport location. Let me get back to the safe zone and refill all my life and weapon energy as I want to showcase the Fire Blast or Flame Blaster or whatever it's called. The medium shot is essentially a tri-arrow, and the full charge shot is a fire wave. I want to get the L tank over the E tank, that's a lot more useful. As right now, I'm using my regular weapons a lot more than my special weapons. Can I even reach there though? No I can't, hmm. I need some extra jump height. Can I reach the left side though? And there are no limits on the number of enemies that can be on the screen at one time. Or no spawning limit cider. Apparently the L and E tanks were mutually exclusive, as by picking up that E tank, the L tank on the right disappeared. Can't pick these up. They're too small. That upper section would be a lot more annoying if this was a regular Mega Man fan game with regular knockback and vulnerability frames. The mini boss here is a giant fire snakey. That was easy. Oh goody, a lot of these fire wave generators. At least they don't deal too much damage. In fact, I'll reset my health right over here before I go to the left segment. I think I'll need it. And the life bar is glitching out here. Where are all the tackle fires coming from? Oh, I see. There's the hothead. Another nice thing is that the fire bars don't deflect my shots. So the fire weapon works pretty well against the fire type enemies. At least that's what it seems. I mean look at it, just one shots most of them. Not even the fully charged Mega Buster can go through all of these tackle fires. He's immune against the fire weapon though. 
Make sense? Out of all the boss patterns so far, his seems to be one of the most dodgeable. Well, to be fair, Gutsman's pattern was the most dodgeable. This one is the second most dodgeable. What do we get by defeating Flame Man? The Heat Suit. Our first of the many armors in this game. Well, six other armor types, that is. Complete immunity to heat-based attacks. Are you sure about that, Dr. Wily? I keep getting new upgrades all the time. Where to next? On to the lower mines, aka submines. As I want to defeat Hard Man. Odd bioluminescence. And a lot of crystals. And the boss here is Gemini Man. Although I expected as much due to the tile sets and the music playing in the background. Something else that I forgot to mention during the previous episode is that all the musical tracks in this game are MIDI remixes, some better than others. In fact, these are the same MIDI tracks used in this game's sequel, Mega Man 3D. So many pole eggs here. At least they don't hatch upon being destroyed. I forget the name of these particular enemies, but they certainly didn't work this way. They act more like up and down crawlers. But hey, it's a neat spin on this old enemy type. I do approve. That's one of the things I like about this game, how familiar enemies work a bit differently. I need to return back here with the explosive weapon. I should be using my special weapons more as well, as they deal a lot more damage compared to the Mega Buster. I'll be using special weapons more once I gain access to my first weapon energy upgrade. Oh goody, these enemies from Bubble Man's level. But now they have guided lasers. They are stuck in the water though, for now. They have the same sound effect as the Gemini Laser in Mega Man 3D. Another change from the classic Mega Man titles 
is that when underwater, Mega Man walks slower, moves, jumps, and slides slower. So water physics in this game work a lot more similarly to Mario and Sonic. Something else to note is that on the map, rooms aren't necessarily to scale. Some rooms are larger than what the map states, and some rooms are smaller than what the map states. But for the most part, it's somewhat accurate, or fairly accurate enough. And here's Hardman. We're back in the upper mines. Of course, he has armor, which has the damage of my own attacks. This pattern is as straightforward as Gutsman's, though it is a little bit harder because you have to dodge his last shockwave attack. We get our second suit upgrade, the hard suit. Take less damage, and are even immune to sunlight attacks, but we can't move as fast or jump as high. Are you sure about that, Dr. Wily? We are a super fighting robot after all. This is certainly slower. I can't even reach these blocks now. Can I get up over there? Yes, I can. But I can't backtrack through here. I can't jump high enough. So I will return back over here and showcase the upper pathway to Hardman. I do like how the upper mines and lower mines connect in this game. It makes the world feel a lot more contiguous. When I say world, I mean Mega City. That's one of the primary goals many Metroidvanias strive for. And scratch my earlier statement, you jump higher when underwater. Still, your jumping speed feels a bit slower. Maybe not your jumping speed, but your walking and sliding speed. Alright, here's Gemini Man. And he can reverse gravity too. Oh, oh, oh. 
I was trying to fire the Mega Buster, but he kept jumping around. Completely ineffective. Doesn't work. That works. I don't think I'm intending to fight Gemini Man now, so let's get out of here. I'll return back here once again, some more weapon upgrades. As my default weapon is completely ineffective against him. Only thing that works is the flame shot, but even then, I don't think I have enough ammo for defeating him. Well, technically I do, but I have to make every shot count. Let's see... I completed the forges, as well as the lower mine, well, at least half of the lower mine. I meant to say I completed the upper mine. So, I'll be completing the left area next. It's the blue area, so I suppose it's the water area. No, it's the ice area. The cooling unit. Dr. Wily has nothing to say over here for some reason, even though there is a boss here. Oh, goody, ice physics. The ice physics are quite crazy here, I mean, just look at it. You can gain a crazy amount of speed with the inertia. And the rate of inertia you gain over here is quite crazy. For instance, it's actually faster to just run through this segment instead of sliding. Sliding just slows you down. And unlike in the original game, these enemies can be destroyed with the Mega Buster, though you do need to use a medium or full charge shot to actually hit them. I'm not holding down any of the arrow keys, by the way. And I got stuck in the terrain. Wonderful. I moved too fast. Is Dr. Wily taking some tips from Dr. Eggman? Even the Yoko blocks have ice physics applied to them. This may take a few attempts. Look at the crazy inertia. Combined with our rather high movement speed, getting through these segments can be a bit unwieldy. But I made it. I can either go to the left or defeat the boss right now. Hmm. Let's go for defeating the boss right now. I just realized something. The reason why Mega Man's color scheme doesn't change upon equipping a new special weapon is because of the suit upgrades. Oh no, bomb throwing mats. We have never seen them in a Mega Man Classic fan game before, at least on this channel. Something else nice about this game is that pickups never despawn. So you can take as long as you want to get the pickups, as long as you don't exit and re-enter the screen. I 
Ice physics do not apply when underwater, though. I need some more speed. What makes this segment a bit harder is that, once you jump outside the water, the physics immediately change. Make sure not to get clipped into the terrain. Take care of these shopmen first. Oh goody, these platforms are a bit desynced. Or I can follow through here. I could make the jump from here, but I don't want to risk it. Not when I'm this close to the boss battle. If only I had the ability to double jump, or my movement speed was higher. This is a lot better this time. Thank you, game. The positioning of these platforms seemed to depend on when I entered the room. Does he have a weakness? Ouch. Did that double hit me? He does have a weakness. It's the fire shot. Yikes, Flashman's flash attack is super damaging. I mean it double hits me for 6 HP. You better have the upgrade before going here, as you can actually fight this boss battle even before you collect the life upgrade. You can either go to the left first or go to the right first and go down from there. After all, this is a Metroidvania, a rather open one so far. Here's our first tool, the Flash. It emits radiation that injures all enemies on screen. It doesn't freeze time though. Dr. Wily is still speechless. So in the next part, I'll travel to the left side of this facility, the left side of the cooling station, unlock the teleporter, visit the gray area, and finally get back on track and follow Dr. Light's commands. Well then, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!